To kind of kick things off, um, this is a quick overview of what NC Live is. Um, if you haven't heard of us before by brand name, um, don't feel bad. We are very much behind the scenes, even though we do work with so many libraries in North Carolina. Um, so NC Live is a membership cooperative that serves four main groups of libraries. And that includes the UNC system libraries, the community colleges of North Carolina, the North Carolina Independent Colleges and Universities, which I also call the NCICU, um, as well as the public libraries. So altogether, that gives us about 209 libraries across the whole state. And you can see that covers a lot of different types, you know, depending on your library interests. So our offices are at North Carolina State University in Raleigh. Um, we were founded in 1997, so we're about 27 years old. Um, and the reason for that is that we provide e-resources. We're really focused on digital services. Um, so you can kind of see with the rise of e-resources in the late 90s, that's kind of why we were founded. Um, and technically we are public-private partnership because we get public funding from the UNC schools, um, the community colleges and the public libraries, and then private funds from the NCICU. So um, that's how we make that claim. So um, one of the big advantages uh, that we serve for the, the whole state of North Carolina um, is that we are able to give everybody the same content and software and services, um, no matter what type of library that you're in. So you can kind of see the breakdown here of the different size communities that we serve. Um, but probably since most of you are from North Carolina or have lived here for a long time, you can tell from this list that there's a lot of library diversity within these, these different categories. So um, you know, UNC system schools, a lot of those schools are really big research institutions, um, same with some of the NCICUs, but also we have a lot of academic libraries that are extremely small, um, sometimes in rural areas with like extremely small student populations. Um, the community colleges really range from serving tons and tons of students to, again, sort of smaller student bodies. Um, and then the public libraries, I mean, you can think about the public library in your hometown maybe versus the public library that you go to um, near your library school. There's just a lot of diversity in our state's library. So that's really awesome from our vantage point because we get to see lots of different needs, lots of different projects going on. Um, but from our consortial standpoint, we deliver the same stuff to everybody. And that will make a little more sense once I get into content. Um, here's a quick overview of our mission statement. It's a little bit broad. Um, but NC Live helps member libraries to better support education, enhance economic development, and improve the quality of life for all North Carolinians. Um, we try to make that broad so that we can encompass, like I said, the diversity of so many libraries in our system. Um, but we're really focused on making sure that our libraries are getting like great value. So this is our staff. Um, we're super small, and you're actually getting, you know, two fifths of our team here on the Zoom today. Um, so you can see me and Devin are on here. Um, Claire Leverett is our interim executive director right now. And Daniel Whitehead is our web and database development librarian. And Julie Klein is our administrative support specialist. So the five of us do pretty much everything with NC Live. Um, our skills span a really broad area and we are frequently working together on lots of different projects. Um, but I show you this to say like, we're a very small team um, that is able to do a lot um, because we work so closely with our member libraries. So when I say that, I'm mostly referring to our advisory committees. And so this is how we can tell like whether or not what we're doing is relevant to the libraries that we serve. Um, so basically, we have these four committees that govern um, our training program, that's the CTAC. Um, our outreach and marketing and partnerships um, programs and projects, that's the OPAC. Um, the Resource Advisory Committee or the RAC helps us decide what resources that we buy. Um, and then our Online Services Advisory Committee helps us with our website and our software. Um, so these are made up of 12 members from each of our um, four communities that I mentioned. So we have equal representation within each of these committees. And then these committees, um, after they brainstorm and work on projects with the NC Live staff, we take them to our executive committee, which is ultimately who makes decisions for our member libraries. Um, so I'm partly mentioning this to give you a sense of how we govern ourselves and how we work, um, but also because we are always encouraging ambitious and exciting people in libraries to join one of our committees. 
Um, and I'll say that this is like a really great way to get to know folks in other libraries, um, a great way for some people to reconnect with library school friends who went on a different track from them. Um, so if you're interested in any of these topics, just keep an eye out. Um, you're also welcome to reach out to us and say, you know, I'm really interested in training opportunities. I'd like to be on the CTAC. Um, and so those terms are three years, so we don't have a ton of turnover, but whenever we have an opening, we're always looking for interested folks. So um, just keep this in mind for the future if you're looking for a fun way to serve on like a professional committee. So I've alluded to this a little bit, but we sort of have these three main buckets that we think about when we're talking about what NC Live offers our libraries. Um, so the first one is content. And so that's what I want to dive into first, because this is really what we're known for in the library world. So when I'm talking about our content, um, I'm talking about this 1.8 billion things that we have in our collection. Um, so that includes online articles, streaming videos, ebooks, digital newspapers, anything digital, individual things in our collections. Um, so that's what this encompasses. Um, in case this wasn't clear, we do all e-resources, so all of our collections are completely digital. And so that's how this stuff is available in every single one of our member libraries. And again, all of those libraries have access to all of these things. So to kind of get you know into a silly metaphor, um, we think of ourselves as kind of the rising tide. Um, so maybe you've heard the saying, a rising tide lifts all boats. Um, our content is kind of this rising tide for all libraries. Um, so no matter your library's budget or service population or whatever differences, you know, it may have with other libraries in the state, um, NC Live content serves as this really strong base collection so that no matter where you live, no matter what library card you hold, you have access to these e-resources. Um, so another thing I'll just mention, because this was a surprise for many of my library cohort friends, um, you do retain access to a lot of the academic articles that you have access to in your academic library. So if you get a public library card, you can still get to a lot of that same stuff. Um, so please spread the word about that. But that's the base collection that I'm talking about. It's available in all of our member libraries. So another advantage of having all these libraries that work together is that we're able to save so much money <laughs> on a state level. Um, I mean, our cost avoidance, you can see here, is really incredible. Um, so what we do at the end of every year is we go to all of our vendors, um, you know, like ProQuest and EBSCO and, you know, all the, all the vendors that we buy e-resources from, and we ask them what they would charge if each of the libraries that we serve was buying this collection on their own. And so we add up that number, and in 2023, the sticker price for all of that was $51 million dollars. Um, which is <laughs> unbelievably high. Um, but what we're able to do is because we can go to these vendors and say, we represent all of these libraries in North Carolina, um, we can get that same collection for about $3.6 million. So you can see here that our you know, collective negotiating power really saves the state a lot of money and it provides tons of stuff for our libraries. So that's one of the real advantages of NC Live. And I think that's a big reason why Lots of library folks love us. As you'll, <laughs> as you'll get into libraries, you'll hear more about this. Um, but yeah, this is, I think, a reason that we're popular is we can just save people so much money. So we to move on to the second bucket, the software bucket, um, I'm actually not going to talk about this a ton today because it's not going to be super relevant until you work in a library. And even then, it's mostly relevant to sort of like technical services folks. Um, we do offer like a website service to help libraries have better websites. Um, we offer a lot of discovery tools and um, support for any time an e-resource goes wrong. We have a help desk for that. Um, but all of that stuff is going to be relevant a lot later. So instead, I'm going to kind of jump into this third bucket of services. And um, for this, I'm going to turn it over to our instruction librarian, Devin, to tell you about our training program. Yeah, so our training program is completely free. So if you see an in-person workshop that we're offering, um, we have one in Winston-Salem on Friday. Those are all things that are at no cost. So um, we offer webinars through our training calendar. Um, those are ones that we lead as well as some of our partner consortia around the country. So 
you might see a webinar series on using Excel in libraries, and that's hosted by Minitex, which is a library consortium in Minnesota. So that's something that we've kind of curated and we work with other consortia to offer different professional development um, than what we're immediately offering. Um, we also have crash course videos on our YouTube channel. So if you want a very short introduction to Novelist Plus or to Learning Express Library or Transparent Language, those videos are under 10 minutes. You get an idea of what the database offers and then some resources for learning um, afterwards. Um, we also, all of the webinars that we personally host, uh, we record and then we put on our YouTube channel. So if you missed our graphic novels webinar that we hosted last month, that's on our YouTube channel. Um, we also have self-paced courses. So we've started using Moodle to host um, two courses and a third one is coming this fall. Um, our NC Live orientation course is basically a primer on all things NC Live, how to use our website, how to use the four librarian section, running usage reports, things like that. Um, and then you do have access to our YouTube channel. We also have a Niche Academy page through the State Library um, that we have listed in our training section. Um, and then next slide, please. Awesome. So yeah, on our training calendar, you're gonna see everything that we're hosting as well as our partner consortia. Um, and so if you're interested in a webinar, all you have to do is register. Um, we send you an automated email with the Zoom link for the webinar. And then we always email logistics emails leading up with any pre-work involved or details um, needed to participate in the webinar. Um, we also have the recorded trainings, as I mentioned. So um, if you're interested in diving into the world of e-resources licensing, we have the Librarian's Guide to Licensing, How to Start Navigating the Complexities. That was led by a team of librarians from Duke and NC State um, in March of this year. And then if you're looking for more um, reader's advisory training, we have Advanced Reader's Advisory. That's a webinar that I co-hosted with Julie Rayner from High Point Public Library in January. Um, and again, we leave these up on our YouTube channel and maintain this channel as a resource so that um, you have on-demand training on a particular topic um, of your interest. And then the crash course videos. So again, these are short under 10 minutes. Uh, this one on Social Explorer, what you'll see with each video is um, in the description section, there's an infographic with search tips and some practice searches. So um, that you can kind of get started, get your bearings in a resource that may seem complicated, like Social Explorer, and then try out some features of the resource on your own. So our business and market research course we launched at the end of May this year. Um, that is basically a self-paced course that um, takes you through practical scenarios in using our business resources like Data Axle Reference Solutions, um, Social Explorer, the ProQuest ABI and Form Collection, um, so that you can take maybe a complex question from a patron or a student, if you're at an academic library, about how to use our business resources and then integrate them with like a small business plan or a project that a student might be working on. Um, these resources are incredibly invaluable and business research is a skill set that is very useful to librarians, whether in public or academic libraries. And so it's something that, uh, based on feedback from our member libraries, we developed um, in partnership with Blink, which is the business librarian section of NCLA. Um, and so we not only have kind of hands-on training on our resources in that course, but we also have case studies gathered from North Carolina member libraries, as well as libraries around the country on how to do business services and programming for a community. Um, and then next month, we're launching Evaluating Student Success in Libraries. So this is a course that um, I have been working with Becky Croxton, who is the outgoing head of strategic analytics at UNC Charlotte. Um, and basically what we did was um, she had hosted an in-person workshop and some webinars on this topic that were really popular. And so 
this course is a really nice opportunity to do a ton of training on data analysis and libraries, taking student data like retention and mapping it onto library data like um, instruction session attendance, checkouts, study room reservations, and conducting analysis that makes a case towards not only uh, library admin, but university leadership about the value of the library and its impact on student success. Um, so the course is predominantly video-based with practice files that you download and you can follow along um, and tons of additional resources. Um, this is something that I think I wish I had when I was a grad student so that I could build some skills before I entered the job market for libraries because if you've taken a research methods course, it um, and you're required to do, you know, t-tests and ANOVAs and learn some basic descriptive statistics and uh, analysis. This takes that and then applies it directly to the impact of student success in libraries. Um, so if you're looking to do more data analysis and build your skills with data analysis and visualization, I highly recommend checking out the course. Um, Becky has already taught me so much about the topic, and it's something that um, reminded me of a research methods class that I took in grad school. So um, definitely something to check out. Awesome. Thank you so much, Devin. Um, I just also want to reiterate, I mean, Devin and I are working on some research now together, and um, we're both kind of thinking back to the research methods class that we took in library school and um, this course and some of the workshops that we've done on this topic have just been so helpful and informative. So if anyone is working on like a master's paper or a master's project, um, this is, can be like another good resource for you to kind of practice that data analysis. Um, so I'm going to launch another audience interactive question um, so we can see who's been paying attention. Um, so this question is... Which of these is not an NC Live community of interest? I know COI usually is a conflict of interest, but we use it as a, as a shorthand for a community of interest. So let's see some answers coming in here. Give everyone a minute to participate. All right, looks like just about everyone's weighed in. So let's see if we can share these results. All righty, so it looks like um, about 50% of you were paying very close attention. Um, the K-12 schools are not one of our community of interest. So K-12 teachers and students, um, actually anyone in the state of North Carolina can access our resources through a library card, um, whether that's like a login through their academic institution or um, a public library card. Um, but the K-12 schools do not directly pay in to NC Live and do not get any representation on our committees. So they're not one of our direct communities of interests. Um, we do, however, serve the community colleges, the UNC schools, the public libraries, and the private colleges and universities. That's that NCICU group. So thank you, everyone, for participating. Um, we're going to close this out. And so um, the next bucket of, of services um, that I'm going to go over here is some marketing materials. Um, this is something that we've heard a lot about from our member libraries, especially in the past year or two, um, that marketing is something that kind of tends to be the last priority in a busy library. Um, and so if you're interested in um, marketing in your library or design or community engagement, um, this is a great resource to know about. We have this page of materials that we make that features NC Live resources. Um, this screenshot's actually from August when we were really focused on um, student ID logins and beach reads. Um, we update this page every month. So if you go to it now, you'll see more like October kind of Halloween stuff on there. Um, but basically, this is an easy way for libraries to um, download these flyers or, you know, digital ads or whatever it may be and repost them easily to share with their communities. And that's like 30 seconds of marketing work for somebody who's pretty busy. So if you work in a library um, or if you're interested in marketing in libraries, this is a great page to visit and you can kind of browse through here and see what we have available. Similarly, we have this print materials program. Um, this is a great program, again, for anyone who's busy and just needs to kind of get some marketing out, um, but it's not a high priority. Um, we have a deal with our vendors to 
send materials directly to libraries for free. Um, so if you want, for example, a CINAHL poster to let your community college students know that they can access this nursing database for free, um, you can filter by vendor at the top. And then once you click on these, you'll have a little shopping cart icon, like your online shopping. You can add it to your cart. There's no limit to how many that you can order. Um, and then once you place your order, we communicate with the vendor to send that to your library. Um, so again, that's absolutely no cost to the individual libraries. You can basically online shop for free. It's really fun. Um, but it's a great way to kind of get the exact amount of stuff that you want instead of getting, you know, a whole load of things from vendors that you don't necessarily use. So this is a great way to let them know like what you're interested in uh, and what you need in your library. Um, I also alluded to this a little bit earlier, um, but one project that we've been working on is making sure that students that graduate from our North Carolina colleges and universities realize that they can still access a lot of resources through their public library. So I know that most people think about their public library for probably physical books, um, probably Libby, probably for events that they host, um, but you can actually get a lot of e-resources e through your public library as well. So this project um, we've set up with several pilot colleges and universities where basically it's this branded pass. You put in your first name, your last name, your email address, and your zip code, and you get 10 days of instant access with like a temporary library code. Um, as if it's through this university. Um, and then after 10 days, it will use the zip code that you gave it to tell you your nearest public library so that you can continue to get free access through your public library indefinitely. Um, so this is one of the ways that we're trying to connect the different library types in the state, um, really strengthening that funnel from folks who come here for college um, through to the public library so that they can get that continuity of access and continue getting the stuff that they're used to. So to kind of go over what is probably most useful for y'all as students at this point, um, I just want to reiterate a lot of what Devin said um, with our training program, that this is a great networking and learning opportunity um, to join the NC Live events. Um, I remember this was a big point of discussion among my friends in library school, um, was that we felt like, first of all, it would be nice to learn more about the actual resources that we would use as librarians. Um, and so, for example, if you know that you want to work as a subject librarian in a particular area, like in business, um, there's a great way to go on to our YouTube channel or to do our business Moodle course and kind of get those practical skills with databases so that once you're on the job market, you can say that you're like proficient in those already. Um, so that's a great way to learn more of those on the ground skills that can be tricky to pick up in library school just by itself. So definitely take advantage of those learning opportunities. Again, they're completely free. They're open to anybody in the library profession. So please take advantage of them. And then the other thing I'll really emphasize about our training program is that it is such a great opportunity to network with other people in the field. Um, whether or not that's something you're excited about, um, networking is a really big part of the job market, especially in North Carolina. Um, it's a very small library community here. And so the more people you know, um, the easier it is to kind of get your foot in the door at a library that you're interested in. And so our events are one of those unique places where people from all kinds of libraries are coming together. Um, there's not a ton of opportunities for like public and academic libraries to get together, for example. So if you're divided about which one you're more interested in, this is a great way to kind of talk to people who work in those areas and get to know more about what they do. So highly encourage you to come both to our in-person um, workshops if they're near you, if you can make it, and to those virtual learning opportunities. Um, we tend to pull in lots of people from lots of different libraries, so that's a great way to make connections. Another great opportunity, especially for networking and especially to build up your resume as you're looking for jobs, is our annual conference. So this is a, a two-day event, usually in May, and we usually have an in-person event on a Friday, nothing over the weekend, and then a virtual event on the following Monday. So if you're interested in presentation opportunities, we always try to um, keep an eye out for um, LIS students who are interested in sharing because it really is one of the goals of our profession to make sure that we're making space for young professionals and um, encouraging them and helping them get their foot in the door. So 
Um, please apply if you have like a presentation that you're interested in doing. But even if you are not interested in presenting, um, I highly encourage you just to attend the event. It's a great way to get to know some of the experts in the field and what they're working on. It's a great way to learn about trends in the field, um, what people are researching and how you can get involved with that. And again, sorry to keep harping on this, it's a great way to meet people. It's really um, a great environment where there's unstructured time for you to just mingle, talk to people, have lunch with them. So if you can make it to our annual conference, um, stay tuned for more information about that coming up in May. And then these last two points, um, another great way to get involved with us and to get some more library experience is that we often have field experience opportunities at the NC Live office. Um, so that's where you can work with our tiny but mighty team of five people and get to know a little bit more about a specialized area of libraries. Um, so I know Devin has had several instruction field experience students in the past, and one of them actually helped design that business course. Um, so we really try to focus on projects that a student can really get a lot of value out of and that you can then put in your portfolio. Um, another example of this, we have a marketing field experience student right now who's working with me, um, helping me make some of those materials that I showed in the previous slide, um, just to kind of help that person get a lot more um, experience with marketing and design and having a portfolio of stuff to show when they start applying to jobs. So um, we really try to make these field experiences interactive and valuable for you in addition to getting experience in a library. So please keep an eye out for those. Um, and then the last thing that might be helpful um, from our current resources, besides using the resources themselves, which are awesome, um, we have tons of information about libraries and their usage data, which anyone can download at any time and look at. So if you are working on a research project um, for a master's paper, or if you're interested in seeing what's popular at a library, like if you're going to do an interview there and you want to see what their popular resources are, you can get all that information from our website, um, which I think will be helpful to show on the next page. Yeah. So this is a screenshot of our drop-down menu on our homepage. Our homepage is nclive.org. And I'll send that out after this webinar um, with links to these resources. Um, but you can see I kind of put these red arrows next to some of the useful things for y'all. Um, so this is all under the four librarians menu up here. But if you wanna look at library specific data, you can go to this usage reports tab, and this is how you can download all this information about what resources libraries are using. So this is great data to have for a project or just for your own knowledge. Um, if you're interested in the annual conference, you can see that over here. And then this training section down here is probably where you're going to get the most value at this point in your library journeys. So please keep an eye out for especially events on our training calendar where you can come and join us and meet us in person if you're interested in that. So to kind of summarize, um, these are our social media accounts if you want to follow us. I highly encourage that because I run them. So of course, if you want to see my awesome content, that's where you should go. Um, but this is how you can get in touch with us. So one thing I highly recommend is joining our listservs. Um, you can see the link here. And once you go to that link, you can select what you're interested in. So we have a training newsletter. We have a marketing newsletter. Um, you can sign up for like general updates if you're interested in any of that. Um, so that's a great way to stay in touch with us and kind of see what's going on in the coming months. We also have a help desk. Um, this is primarily for e-resource support. So if you're working at a library and an e-resource is not working, this is who you should reach out to because we'll help you resolve it. Um, but we also answer all kinds of questions on our help desk. So if you have any questions about anything we've talked about today, please feel free to reach out. Um, to our email is probably the best way to reach us, but you can also give us a call at that phone number at the bottom.